And we are recording. Today is Friday. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, October twenty third. Just uh, just as a reminder, uh, to, today uh, today's week. I mean this week quiz has been launched uh, today at uh, midnight, uh, which is in the morning. Uh, and it is going to go until uh, a week from now. So please, uh, in the, um, let's just see here. Let me just queue up something. Uh, okay, so this is our class right here. I have updated our icon. I like this one better. So today, that's today's lecture, quiz, the quiz. The quiz begins available on October 30, uh, sorry, October 23rd, um, 12 a.m., which is already started because today is October 23rd until October 31st, uh, 12 a.m., which means, this means here 12 a.m., that means this is the end of October 30th, when the clock starts midnight, October 30th, then the quiz is going to be offline. And please go over these rules here. You do have two attempts. Not to have the best of two, but the last one, your last attempt is going to count. I have to make it somewhat challenging because it is an open book test, so uh, you have all the resources available. Uh, so, and then there is no time limit on this. Once you start, there is no two hour time limit. You can uh, consult anything you want as long as you're learning. And here's the thing, can you cheat? Well, you can uh, cheat on pretty much anything you want, but uh, you're going to cheat yourself if you do, okay? Because if you don't learn the stuff, you are going to get stuck on the job or trying to find a job or trying to keep a job that you already have. And if you don't learn the stuff, even if you get a better mark because if you're cheating, then you're going to lose the job. You won't, be, you won't be able to keep that. And trust me, if you don't know how to do your job, the people that you work with, they will catch on that just like that. Oh, can you see here? Okay, here. Slap of the finger. All right. All right, here's my other <laughs> motivational speech. Somebody has a microphone on. <clears throat> Who is it? Who's got a microphone on? Okay, uh, Ganesh, turn your mic off. Just so if your phone rings or something, you're talking to your friend in your room, so we don't hear that. Thank you. Look at that. We're all, we're all happy here now. Okay, let's start. Uh, let's start today's lesson. Cue up the topic. And here it is. This is, so let's see if I can just bring it up on the full view here, full screen mode. And, yeah. Okay, EMT bending. That's today's topic of today's lesson. Right. Let's get some definitions here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. EMT stands for electrical metallic tubing and this is something that we talked about yesterday and we're going today we're going to talk about uh, bending that, uh, the, that that emt and another just a, as a retraction from yesterday a raceway definition for a raceway i believe somebody asked me about the raceway yesterday a raceway, sometimes referred to as a raceway system, is an enclosed conduit or piping that forms a physical pathway for electrical wiring 
Raceway protects wires and cables from heat, humidity, corrosion, water, intrusion, and general physical threats. All right. As a electrician, as an electrician, you will be required to install EMT as part of your job. It's going to be your bread and butter as you go along with your electrical career. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the EMT serves as the raceway for the cabling infrastructure. As you noticed, uh, I don't have to admit you anymore. I figured that out. actually Mr. Lyons helped me with that, uh, with the setting. Uh, if I to set up the Zoom for this. Uh, so thank you, Mr. Lyons. All right, this is how, this is what I'm talking about as far as bending pipes or bending conduit. Bending conduit is, um, uh, is an art. And I'm going to tell you that if you are really good at it, if you spend some time and energy on learning how to do that, and if you happen to have that thing in your hands, <coughs> if you find that you're talented when it comes to doing that, uh, you are going to be well respected within the industry and you're going to be hired a lot. Sometimes you can do just that um, and spend the whole career that, oh, and that. So I'm not saying don't learn any other stuff, just learn this. And if you think this is simple, uh, then think again. But I would encourage you to spend extreme amount of time and energy to learn how to do the pipe bending meters because there's a lot to it. One is to know the, the, the know-how and uh, the knowledge or the, sorry, the difference between information and the knowledge. So you're going to get the information on how to do this and how do you turn the information into knowledge is that if you actually try it and you learn how to actually physically perform the task. And if you have that, then you have the knowledge of doing that. Otherwise you just have information on paper. <clears throat> Okay, so uh, the ability to bend conduit is a requirement for all electricians. We have gone over that. Here's, a, here's an example of uh, an immaculate artwork when it comes to doing pipe bending. A lot of uh, geometry is being used uh, when it comes to that. But if you get good at it, it becomes simple. Is it hard? Well, it's, it's not hard if you know how to do it. <laughs> eh, all right. uh, sorry for... Uh, that's okay. Don't worry. I know that some of you have, are, are writing a test. So if some, uh, some of uh, us are late for this uh, class, that's okay. This is being posted on YouTube. So you can just, uh, uh, just log into the, our regular playlist and click on this video and you're going to see the first part of it. All right, now, EMT basic sizes. EMT, electrical metallic tubing. Electrical, see if I can just uh, zoom in here a little bit. All right, electrical metallic tubing, tubing uh, aka AMT, also known as ten wall. Sometimes it's referred to as ten wall. Uh, it's a steel raceway of circular cross section. Steel raceway of a circular cross section. <coughs> Which is unthreaded and nominally 10 foot long and sometimes it comes in 20 feet uh, lengths. So if you go to Home Depot or Home Hardware or Cobbs Build All or Canadian Tire, you will see, uh, just go to the electrical section and, and see some of that EMT. You're going to see a lot of the mostly half inch and there's three quarter inch, uh, uh, one inch pipes, depending on the job that you need. But uh, half inch is uh, somewhat most popular size um, as far as the uh, conduit. Available in trade sizes, half inch, all the way up to four inches in diameter. Uh, the outside is the outside is galvanized. The outside uh, surface of EMT is galvanized. It's a treating process. 
for corrosion protection so it doesn't get rusted it doesn't get eaten away by a rust um, by the rust uh, I'm just trying to see the chat lines nothing uh, how do you do it I don't know what you mean but uh, oh, that's a long it's a, <laughs> the question is short but the answer is long <laughs> all right uh, so we're getting to it right now uh, so the outside of the pipe is galvanized for corrosion protection and the inside has an approved corrosion resistant organic coating uh, corrosion a lot of piping so if, if you have the piping installed the conduit installed in the um, inside a dry environment inside of a building <coughs> there is not that much of a uh, water uh, risk of water getting into it however if you have any sort of tubing um, it could be usually pvc if it's buried in the uh, in the ground uh, most of the time you just can't escape the fact that the water is going to get in there so all, most of the almost all the uh, the piping that is in ground is going to have water in it that's why there is certain depth that we need to bury those pipes so the water doesn't freeze and damage the wires and it's a dirty water too trust me uh, okay <clears throat> EMT is installed by the set screw compression type coupling or compression type couplings and connectors uh, what do we mean by that? I'll show you what we mean by that. Actually, uh, if you look at the last uh, yesterday's uh, lesson, when you see AMT, they're going to see a coupler. You're going to see couplers. So there would be um, the one pipe. And if you need to extend it, there is going to be a compression type or set screw type coupler so the pipe is going to go a certain distance it's going to go a certain distance and there would be set screws here just like that all right and those screws are going to tighten that pipe just hold it in place yeah, so these are called set screws Set screws. Set screws. These things right here. Okay, let's go. Uh, <clears throat> trade sizes. Let me just uh, zoom out a little bit. Yeah, okay. Well, trade sizes. So uh, uh, I have a little table that I made a couple of years ago that explains the sizes of the metallic tubing, and these are the common uh, trade sizes. So we are talking about half inch condo, three quarter, one inch, one and a quarter, one and a half, two inches, two and a half, three, three and a half, and four inches in diameter. The thicker the condo is, the harder it is to bend. Okay. Uh, and this is uh, in imperial, that's in inches, and of course this is the equivalent in millimeters, but uh, on the construction sites here in North America, most of the time you're going to be referring uh, to the sizes of the uh, metallic tubing in the imperial uh, system. It's just, even though in Canada we are in metric system, but uh, you're going to see on the construction site, you're going to, in the construction business, or uh, on site, you're going to uh, operate with the imperial. Then uh, there is, of course, uh, I'm not going to test you on that. Uh, I'm not expecting you to remember that. However, I might ask you a question about some of that table, just, just to make you look into the table, because uh, the test that you're going to have is going to be an open book. So I, sometimes I'll be making you, I'll make you look. So if it's open book, I make you look. Wow. Friday. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, okay, so this is in pounds and kilograms, the size, uh, so of course, if it's a thicker size uh, per length, per hundred feet, that pipe is going to be heavier. Now, uh, the 
inside diameter of half inch is a half inch. Now the outside diameter of half inch conduit is going to be 0.706 inches, a little bit thicker because uh, you have to add the wall to that. Eh? I mean, I, do I have to explain it? Maybe I do. Here is the pipe, okay. So this would be the inside diameter and this would be the outside diameter. Of course, there is a wall that is certain thickness, so it's going to make things a little bit thicker, okay? Erase, erase. Okay. Yeah. And here, just to make things nice and neat. All right. Let's keep going with this thing here. Uh, what else do we have in this table here? Uh, oh, so there's a wall thickness. So of course, if you, uh, if you, sometimes if you can't sleep, you can just uh, look at this table and see if those, uh, the wall thickness and the inside diameter plus the wall thickness, does it add up to the whole outside diameter? That's if you're sleepless, okay? Sometimes at night. Anyway, let's keep going with this thing here. This is what the EMT looks like, electrical metallic tubing. Right? So some of them are half inch. This probably that's what looks to me like uh, uh, maybe one inch, yeah. They come in different sizes. Okay, you are going to do bending uh, in uh, some complicated bending next term with Mr. Crouch or Mr. Hamilton or whoever else is going to teach you that. I'm not going to show you all the details on how to do the uh, bends just yet because we just don't have enough time. And we don't have enough labs. That is going to be the next term. But before you attempt doing that, there's going to be something, there's some stuff that I need you to know or I'm going to suggest you, suggest for you some activities that you can do yourself a favor and start practicing before you get to those lessons. Because this is a complicated process. If the learning curve is a little bit steep on that. Um, so I would suggest, I'm, I'm going to tell you how, if you do what I say, you're going to have easier time once you cross over to the next level of consciousness. <clears throat> All right, basic type of bands. You need to know that. And I'm going to ask you, you should be, I should wake, I should be able to wake you up at night and ask you about these bands. So if you hear a knock in the middle of the night um, and you don't know who that is, it's probably me with this piece of paper. And I'm going to ask you, what type of band is that? All right, so that's what I'm gonna do. No, not really. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so basic bands. Over here, if it's a, <laughs> if it's a 90 degree band, right here, right, that's called a stub. Right? That's all there is to it. A 90 degree stub is, 90 degree band is called a stub. This is the type of band of the conduit. Now, you can, uh, when it comes to half inch pipe, or, see, I, I keep referring this thing to as pipe. You're going to hear that a lot. Because you know what, I think in English language, pipe is easier to pronounce than the conduit, conduit, because it takes a little bit more energy to pronounce conduit. So uh, in everyday language on construction site, quite often you're going to hear the word pipe or electrical pipe. Wow. But that's, uh, that's basically what, the, what it is. Uh, the stubs, um, if it's a half inch pipe, then you're going to have easy time to do this with your uh, pipe bender, the, the manual pipe bender. But uh, sometimes you're going to, uh, especially if you run wires into electrical panels or multiple wires, even for the data wiring, quite often, it's especially for the data wiring, because sometimes you're going to install the pipe or the electrical conduits, not just for yourself. Uh, very often you're going to get, a, elect, uh, your company is going to get a contract to install the electrical wire but usually the communication business is subcontracted 
from the electrical companies and quite often when the electricians are installing the conduits or laying out the pipes in the building they'll be doing this thing for yours for you'll be doing it for yourself so you can run your own electrical wires but as a part of the contract you'll also be requested to install the conduits for the telecommunication companies such as a data a computer network and a pa system or whatnot a telephone and things like that uh, and when it comes to communications, uh, often uh, there will be requests for uh, two-inch pipes, two-inch conduits. Um, and they are really hard, uh, much harder to bend than the half-inch pipes. Uh, you're going to learn how hard it is or how much pressure you're going to have to uh, uh, engage into uh, bending just a half-inch pipe. Then when it's uh, when moving for the, up with the thickness, you're going to have to apply different, uh, uh, you know, more pressure to, uh, to, 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 to bend the pipe. And there are certain techniques uh, that we're going to show you in the labs on how to make your life easier when you're doing that. Okay. But when it comes to stabs, which is 90 degree angle, uh, often you can, you can buy pre-made stabs. Uh, so again, if you go to any hardware store that sells those or electrical stores, but uh, if you go to like, for example, Home Depot, Rona or, or, or Lowe's or, or other department stores that sell those, uh, in the electrical sections where the piping is or the conduits uh, section, you are going to see some pre-bent, pre-made um, um, half inch uh, stabs. And uh, they'll be just, they'll just right angles then you can couple them with other pipes to uh, to make them so uh, so quite often uh, if, if you need to do that uh, if you need to bend the um, uh, two inch pipe into uh, into a stub uh, often it's just easier to go and buy some of those and couple them with other straight pipes uh, much easier and quicker you know? All right, so here is the um, stub band. Now, another type of band, a common band, is called a back-to-back -back band. And the band is, uh, uh, so that when the pipe goes from one end and just turns around and goes the other way. So it's just a U-shaped type of a band. And very easily, you can remember, this is called a back-to-back -back band. Let me tell you, it's so much easier now when I don't have to admit people manually. You can just join the meeting. That's great. All right. So, uh, so that's the other you know, back to back band. Bend. Uh, then there is an offset band. Offset band, uh, that's when you have to change the plane of run, uh, play, the plane of how the uh, pipe runs. Uh, uh, for whatever reason. Uh, so uh, there's a one plane and then you have to do an offset so the pipe runs on a different level. Uh, so that's an offset band. There are also common things that are called box offsets. See, electrical box, the connector sits, uh, doesn't sit flush with the wall. Right? Uh, so in order to run the, the, the pipe along the wall, it has to be adjacent to the wall, and then they're going to, uh, to, 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 to use uh, clips in, and, and mount them to the wall or to the drywall or, or plywood or whatnot. Uh, so this has to be adjacent with the wall. So in order to run the wire or the conduit into the box, you have to make something that's called a box offset. Okay. So, this is offset and this is offset, but there's a special type of offset. Offset is called box offset. And this is going to be the lab that we're going to perform. It's going to be the second last lab. We are going to get a three feet, uh, half inch conduit each. And we're going to make two box offsets that are going to have to be aligned with each other in the same plane because it's, you know, we're, we're working in three-dimensional world right now so the box offset has to be nice and straight with the other box offset and once you put the box on uh, against the table or a wall you should be able to lay the pipe on the surface on the same surface and it should be to just slide in right into the connector okay. Another type of band that uh, <clears throat> we distinguish is those saddle bands. Here's a saddle band, and here's a saddle band. Okay. 
And we distinguish two types of saddle bands as the, uh, um, the most common ones. And one is three point saddle band and four point saddle band. Uh, how, uh, uh, how is the three point saddle band solved? Um, I got a, Okay, sorry, the phone was ringing. I just had to stop that. I couldn't concentrate when I'm talking. Uh, the phone is ringing. All right, so three point subtle band. It has three points one, two, and a three. So that's a three point subtle band, and there's a four point subtle band one, two, three, and four. Okay. Nice and easy, simple. These are the types of bands. How many do we do, do, we do here? We're well, listing one, two, three, four five, six type of bands. Okay. Um, okay. Now, in order to bend the pipes, we are going to use pipe benders. They're the manual pipe benders that we have. We have the something that's called ideal. Ideal is the, um, can we use M elbow? If you have to, yes, you can use elbow. Right? which would uh, probably be another um, name for a stub, okay? Because elbow, let me do this, uh, nah, 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 nah. all right. Would that be an elbow? Yeah, you can make, you can get pre-made ones. And the elbows or the, or the stubs, uh, uh, you're going to get uh, some of those in the PVC version as well. But PVC piping and the metal piping is uh, uh, well, slightly different. Uh, different approach to those. Okay. Now, pipe benders. Here's the EMT bender, electrical metallic tubing bender. And um, here is a hickey bender. The hickey bender is, has a um, slightly smaller shoe, because this is a shoe part of it. That's when you need to really get into some tight spaces, uh, and this uh, bigger shoe prevents you from accessing the tight bands. So if you need to, uh, to if you need to bend things uh, that are higher angles in, in tighter spaces, you might have to use that. Right? The ones that we have in our school, um, in our class, are the blue one, blue handled ones, and they are made by Ideal. But uh, you can get claim tools or Ideal. See here is a oh, uh, 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 all right. Here is uh, an example of the Ideal Bender, and there's an example of claim tools Bender. They work slightly different, but they accomplish the same thing. Some people prefer one over the other. Um, I wouldn't say one is better than the other. It's just uh, some people like using ideal tools. Some people are like using the claim tools. Um, it's a matter, really matter of preference. Okay. And some people like to use both. Uh, one thing I'm going to tell you, each tool, as each tool is, um, oh, you're welcome, uh, as each tool has its own personality. Remember when uh, I was showing you the, um, the way that this wire stripper works? Um, in order to strip the 14 gauge solid, the groove in this particular stripper was scratching the wire, so I moved to the next one. So I know, now I know the personality of this particular stripper, wire stripper. Okay. Then uh, um, pipe benders. Pipe benders have also their own personality, okay? So usually people like to use their own tools when it comes to, um, when it comes to pipe bending. Uh, it has something to do with the, the way it works exactly. Sometimes you need to push a little bit harder in some cases or you know, push it not as hard. Um, and there's a type of spring back action that you, you, you bend the pipe into a certain degree and then you release the pipe bounces a little bit back. Uh, so um, um, now as you go along, you will know, uh, you will build this thing into your muscle memory that uh, the more you do it, the easier it is going to get. Right. Um, all right. <clears throat> 
keep going. Oh, that's not uh, PowerPoint. It's a, all right, the parts of the, the parts of the pipe bender, you need to know some of the parts. Uh, so, uh, okay, so I didn't put uh, the names of the, the, the names of the parts of the pipe bender, but this is obviously, this is called a handle, all right? This is called, this whole part here is called a shoe. Right. Here is the hook. There are the marks here, marks and notches, markings, uh, and there's the there's the foot of it. And sometimes the foot is going to be accompanied with the boot. You put the boot on the foot, and here's a foot rest that if you are doing the bends on the ground or in the air. Some bends you do on the ground, that means you have to lay the pipe on the ground and get your pipe bender uh, on the ground, and get the pipe bender, hook it up, and then you're just going to do the bend uh, on the ground. And then you're going to use the footrest, you can step on it, and then uh, so you're gonna put pressure on the footrest, help it with your hand, and some, some type of bends are going to be done on the ground, and some types of bands are going to be done in the air. So on the ground or in the air, which means you're going to put the pipe straight up. You're going to get your pipe bender, hook it up. And, uh, uh, oh, sorry. You're going to put your, uh, here's the pipe bender. And here's the pipe. You're going to put the pipe on the ground and you're going to get a pipe hook out. And then you're just going to use, you can to uh, uh, use your arm to, uh, to bend those pipes. So. On the ground, you put the pipe on the ground and you use the pipe bender to bend it. And in the air, you put the pipe bender, you rest it against the floor, and then you, you just put the pipe and you bend it accordingly to whatever bend you're going to perform. That also you need to know. Right? Now, um, when, uh, when it comes to the shoe parts, uh, we distinguish uh, specific types of marking. Like for example, this is the hook. Okay, so that, and uh, there are uh, there are some suggested uh, videos that I'm going to uh, give you the links for, and it's the, at the end of this uh, presentation. And I really strongly encourage you to go through those YouTube videos. It's a good start, excellent start. Now the shoe parts. Here's the arrow. And that is going to be used a lot with aligning some of the markings that you're going to make on the pipe when doing uh, when doing bends. Uh, there's a teardrop. There's a bit of a notch here. There is a star, and these are the angle marks. So teardrop notch on the rim right here used for the center of, uh, you're going to use for the center band on three point saddles. Star is used for back to back bands. You're going to align some of the markings with a star. And the arrow is used for all other bands. Uh, that's all I can tell you at this point <clears throat> without going into uh, you know, too many details. Um, I suggest, no, it's not mandatory, but uh, if you're serious about this, this here's my suggestion. In, you might have to spend 100 bucks or so. Go and buy one of those if you're serious about this business and buy a good one. Some of the pipe benders, uh, the shoe part, this part here, is made out of a ductile iron. And it's going to look black. Okay. And some of the uh, shoes are going to be made, excuse me, out of aluminum. The aluminum ones are cheaper, less expensive, but they last not as long as the ductile iron ones. They last longer. And if you can get your hands on some scrap pieces of uh, especially half inch conduit because uh, you know when it comes to buying tools 
uh, try not to buy those your tools all of them at once because you're going to have to get a big loan into, uh, uh, into just buying the tools. So uh, if you're serious about this business, keep buying tools one at a time. So uh, maybe uh, sometime uh, get yourself a uh, half inch um, uh, pipe bender that accompanies half inch EMT. All right, then uh, later on you can just buy another one that accompanies uh, three quarters of an inch. All of them are like 100 bucks each you're going to spend. So uh, try to spend the money uh, only if you're serious about that. Get yourself one and get some scrap pieces or maybe sometimes you can buy those uh, 10 foot lengths in the store and practice and practice and practice those um, uh, the pipes the, uh, the the EMT especially half inch they're not that expensive they're cheap okay and you can uh, you can just keep buying and then and, and, and practice 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 you get good at it unfortunately the only way of, to get good at this thing trust me on that is by doing it and you're going to make mistakes you're going to learn from them but then uh, when you learn you're going to have that much under your belt uh, and you're going to have something to offer when you're looking for a job Employability skills. Um, all right. Now, over here, I have uh, you, this thing is going to this whole presentation is going to be available for download in PDF form uh, in about twenty minutes. It's kicking in at around twelve o'clock, and I would suggest that you are you watch these. Just start with these one, two, three, four videos. I updated those hyperlinks. So just click on that when you have a PDF file on your computer and watch those videos and try to refer that, those videos that you're going to watch to the terminology here. Start, you drop, you know, arrow and stuff. We are going to perform in our second last lab we're going to perform a box offset bend. We're going to get three, we're going to get three foot pipe each. And we're going to make two box offsets. One on one side and the other one on the other side. And that is supposed to accommodate the height of the connector in the in two boxes, two electrical boxes. Okay. And that is supposed to be on the same plane. And those two box offsets, they have to be exactly at the same height. They have to enter the box connector nice and easy. You put it on, you can't force it. Just slide that in. It's not that easy to do at first. And the other thing is that when you take this pipe, when you just uh, flip it around, the if you look at it from the top, it should look straight, just like that. And here will be the boxes. We don't want that thing to look like this from the top, slightly. If you uh, if you turn this box, these two box offsets, if you turn it sideways, uh, here's the terminology here. If that thing is offline, it's not in the same plane. If you look at it, it's called a dog leg. You know, the dog lifts his leg. You know, um, uh, that's uh, this the terminology. It's called dog leg. So you don't want to get a dog leg, uh, and you're going to get a good demonstration by the lab instructor on how to do it, and you're going to have the whole two hours, or almost two hours, to do to perform two box offsets. So I would suggest that you practice, um, and then later on, as 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 you continue with your studies in our college, you are going to next term you're going to perform a lot more complicated bands. Okay, so there we go. Uh, that's the uh, that's uh, that's today's class. Uh, please, please watch those videos. And one thing I'm going to tell you when it comes to watching these videos here, it is going to look so easy 
Oh yeah, so if you watch it once or twice or three times, yeah, I know how to do it. Trust me, you don't. <laughs> once, once you actually start performing that task, you're going to find that uh, you need to practice. And the only way, as I said, as I mentioned before, the only way to get good at this thing is to, uh, to, uh, to just keep doing it. Okay? Is the quiz, is this on the quiz? Not on this quiz. Okay? The quiz, let me just see here. Here is what's on the quiz. Study materials or references, as I call them. These are all the posted lecture notes up to boxes and devices. So yesterday's and today's class is not included on that quiz. And it's an open book. So you're going to have to look for some answers in those. And of course, uh, all the recorded videos that we have posted um, uh, as a reference. Okay, yeah, and when is the quiz? It's right here. It's, it's, here's the, our class portal. All the information is here. Just remember, this October 31st midnight a.m., that means that's the midnight of October 30th, not 31st. And the quiz is already open. Now, it started this morning. So you have a whole week to do it. Please, from my experience, I can just say, the quicker you do it, the better. <clears throat> just like make yourself a good coffee. There is no time limit on this thing. So just once you start it, some, uh, sometimes you're going to get a time limit of an hour to complete the quiz. Sometimes you're gonna get a limit of two hours to complete the quiz. I have turned that off. So you can take five hours to do the quiz as long as you don't get kicked out from FOL for lack of activity. Uh, so um, yeah, just 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 do it as quick as as you can, as soon as you can. Uh, it's not the best of two attempts. No, 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 no. It is attempts. Let's just say here. Do we have the preparation attempts? Uh, attempts. You have two attempts to carry out this quiz. The last attempt goes on record. Not the best of two. It's it's spelled out here. The reason, for, uh, the reason for that is that when, uh, uh, when you start doing the quiz, sometimes you get problem with the internet or something like that. So then uh, you have another chance to do this. So again, as I said, uh, once you get a problem with the internet while you do it, don't log in right back because try to figure out what the problem was uh, and then uh, try to maybe a, a different location or something like that. Uh, so that's the reason why I do this. Okay. Usually, uh, what happens is you have a time limit at a specific time and get two hours. But now you have a whole week. My, uh, my, um, my philosophy on this thing is, in this particular class, in this particular subject, other ones, uh, other subjects, uh, maybe this is not a good idea to evaluate. But I find that this works as long as you're not cheating. But then again, if you're cheating, you're cheating yourself. But I don't want to give you the spill again. Right? Uh, so yeah, all right. I'm just before I start talking in circles, we're going to end this class right now. And if anybody has any questions, by all means, send me an email. Uh, now, if you miss the deadline, which is the whole week of the quiz that you have to do, and you don't happen to have it done, uh, please do not send me emails for extensions because I'm just going to ignore those emails. You have a whole week to do it. There's no excuse for not doing it, okay? If I keep doing, if I keep accommodating those kind of things, I might as well just give you the marks for free. Come on. This is, uh, you know, I, I make a step forward to you, just make a couple of steps forward to me as well. I know how to do this. You need to learn how to do this, okay? All right, have a guys, happy Friday. Enjoy your weekend. Uh, it seems the weather is really nice. Uh, so uh, don't do anything you wouldn't write home about. And have a happy, safe weekend. And I will see you when I see you. No more questions. I don't see anything. Thank you so much. And um, I'll see you later. Bye.